It's March 21st and at Riverside Baptist Church, a group of volunteers are gathering to prepare for a trip that has become something of a tradition for the church. We're leaving in the morning, going to Horse Creek Church in close to Yeager, West Virginia on our mission trip. We've been there many times over the past 10 or 12 years. This is our first day of spring, but to feel it right now, it's about 30 degrees, but I hope we're gonna have good weather tomorrow. We've got quite a few people helping load the trailers, restack stuff, and getting ready for the, for the trip tomorrow, but uh, got more people coming in here in a few minutes. Hopefully get everything loaded up before dark. With the help of Pastor Steve. On the way to heaven, I know it won't be long. <laughs> we load up three trailers with items donated by the members of Riverside and the surrounding community. This is an important to those people up there. They, they have a lot of fires during the winter months. They, they heat with coal and not too good of chimneys, and they have a lot of burnouts. And it's important to them this time of year to have furniture and clothes because again, not only that they're burnt out, but uh, they always have problems, shortage of jobs, people not working this time of year to, to, to buy clothes. And we talked to them a few weeks ago and they said they had, a, they had a need for furniture, but we've got a lot of other stuff. We've got food that's going. We just got an abundance of stuff this time. Our, the people here in the community and the church have really stepped up. At 6.30 a.m. on March 22nd, we're ready to set off on the five and a half hour journey to Yeager, a small coal mining town with a population of 302. Pastor Steve meets us and leads us in prayer for a safe travel. I pray that through these efforts and the efforts of the churches, God, the people's lives will be changed, that will be one to you, Lord God. And then we're on the way. By 10 a.m., we're off the interstate and traveling through rural areas of Virginia and West Virginia. As we enter coal mining country, the roads get higher, narrower, and curvier. Every few miles, we pass rows of company houses built years ago as homes for mine workers. We see working coal mines, abandoned coal mines, and fast moving double stack trains. And it's not unusual to have to pull over in the middle of town to let a coal truck pass. Finally, at about 12.30 p.m., we enter Yeager, part of McDowell County, West Virginia, which was once one of the largest producers of coal in the United States before the industry declined in the area. We head up the one-lane Horse Creek Road to arrive at Horse Creek Church of the Living God, where we find a funeral is in progress. As soon as the funeral is over, it's time to get to work. We're at Horse Creek Church in Yeager, West Virginia. Uh, this is a church that we started coming to probably at least 10 years ago, maybe even closer to 12, but uh, a church that we kind of adopted with Pastor Marvin Kennedy and Marvin and his wife Edna are here today that we hadn't saw them in a long time. Sorry, Marvin. That's all right. I never had seen you like that. Yeah. But you look good. Thank you. Those of us who have been here before almost didn't recognize Marvin because he used to look like this. Hey, right here. Used to be the pastor at the church and his wife. Hello, this is, everybody. This is who started it all. Ed and Marvin Kennedy started this vital ministry at Horse Creek Church over a decade ago while Marvin was pastor. We started this because uh, people was in need around here, and a lot of, we used to give out food up here to the people. And uh, then we, they started bringing in the clothes, and we started doing that and the furniture, and just helping them all different ways. We've been going to church here for 36 years. 
and Marvin was pastor for uh, 20 some years. And it's been so long since we started this, and they started bringing stuff from North Carolina and helped a whole lot of people here that really needed. Several years ago, one of those people in need was Armida King, who is a member of Horse Creek Church and now helps with the ministry. My house was flooded one time, and I lost everything, and the preacher had invited us to send the church, and I lived here for three months, and uh, when they brought the stuff in from the churches out there, uh, my house is fully, with all the furniture and all the stuff has pretty much come from out there. So the church and the, the y'all's church out there and all has helped us wonderful. Yeah, it's done really good. This is a place that's way back in the, like a country part and nobody, there's not a lot of jobs around here and, and uh, there's a lot of people that likes to live around here and stuff, but you know, uh, there's not a lot going on. So them helps out a whole lot of kids and a whole lot of people that don't have the, money and stuff to be able to buy it. They're all really good people around here. Uh, most of them, uh, a lot of them goes to church and we're all just like one big family. When somebody's down, you know, other people get involved and tries to help the other people, help our neighbors. And that's what this whole ministry is about, helping our neighbors and helping other people, whether they're just down the road or 250 miles away. The picture you see here, the Lord gave Marvin a vision of the picture, and it took him five years to get somebody to, to uh, paint it. And uh, so we got that done, and we got, we had uh, old benches that just was slats, and we got new seats. Horse Creek Church may be small, but the love its members have for each other and the Lord isn't. If one person hurts, we all join in and try to help each other. It's a really good place. It's good to see these people every time we come up, and they're real receptive. Uh, we've talked to them about doing a Bible school this summer. Uh, Miss Arby just going to help us put that together, and for the youth, and she's wanting an adult class. So uh, hopefully our church can step up, and uh, we can we can help them out on that sometime July or August of this year. <laughs> With everything unloaded at Horse Creek Church, we head out toward High Knob Church just a few miles away. The one lane paved road that takes us there is narrower and curvier than any mountain road you've seen in western North Carolina. Utility work forces us to stop for almost 40 minutes near the top of the mountain, but we eventually arrive at High Knob Church of the Living God and the Mountaintop Food Pantry. Out front stands a detailed and lifelike sculpture of Jesus on the cross. There's no one there to greet us, but that doesn't stop us from doing what needs to be done. The remainder of the food donations we brought, about half the load, is unloaded into the food pantry building. From there we head back across the mountain, get stopped for another 40 minutes, and return to Jaeger before starting the long trip back home. The ministries of Horse Creek Church and High Knob Church have a major impact on a lot of people in the area. And they wouldn't be possible without the people like Marvin and Edna Kennedy, Armita King, and the generous people of Riverside Baptist Church. It's just amazing to see what the community has sent up here. Uh, a lot of times you see stuff that should have gone to the landfill that, that some people see them, but this is just all good stuff and, and they're they're real appreciative of it. So uh, again we appreciate our church family and our community that, that help us meet this need and again it's this is a ministry of our church and uh, uh, not just a few people. I would like to thank them very much. Uh, we appreciate everything they do here for us and, and uh, enjoy really seeing them come in. 
Well, it's just been a great help. We really, we really appreciate all the people that has helped us. And uh, it's brought more people into the church, and they've seen what we're helping them with, and they want to come to church. You know? and we appreciate everything that you all have done, and we love you all.